Let me introduce myself. My name is Richard Peters. And people say I was born ambitious, and they're probably right, because I love to be number one. I was born in 1810 in Philadelphia, and mother always said my ambition came from being the second of 10 children. You see, I very much wanted the respect that is normally granted to the eldest child, so I worked hard to be the best at everything. And I'm more than a little proud to tell you that I helped lead the campaign to change this city's name to Atlanta. Can you imagine if we were still called Marthansville? No. no. Sounds like a sleepy little village, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But Atlanta, now there's a name for a booming metropolis. Even my horse here is named Champion. Beautiful creature, isn't she? Now, all of my animals were state fair prize winners. Best Brahmin bulls, best Devon cows, blue ribbon Angora goats. Yes, I was the first person in this nation to import Angoras from Turkey. They called them cashmere goats for their long flowing coats. And do you know that I paid $1,000 a piece for those animals? Sounds amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. But I was the first to do it, and it was worth every penny. Now, I didn't always intend to be the city-fied businessman. When I was 11 years old, my family traveled by covered wagon 100 miles west of Philadelphia and started farming, and I loved it. I wanted to know all there was to know about farming, from making maple syrup to raising cattle. But mother's heart was set on my getting a formal education. And when I found out they were sending me off to boarding school, I took off through the woods because I wanted no part of it. <laughs> but they caught me quick enough. And when they did, they dressed me in one of uncle's hand-me-down suits and off to school I went, none too happy about it. But you know what? I found that education nourished my ambitious temperament and my natural curiosity. I became fascinated with the mechanical arts. An acquaintance of mine, the famous architect and engineer William Strickland, advised me, he said, Richard, you need to attend classes at the Franklin Institute. Now, as you may know, the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia was founded in honor of America's first great scientist, Benjamin Franklin, and it helped me. But how does a young man go all the way from barefoot to businessman, from north to south, from Philadelphia to Atlanta. Well, it turns out I had a head for engineering. And I got a job with the railroads. Now understand, in the 1830s, railroads were America's future. And I worked hard at it, and I rose in the ranks, and I reinvested every penny I made back into transportation. But I realized at the same time that horses were still the mainstay of travel. So I founded a stagecoach line in 1844. That's what brought me here to Atlanta. And I fell in love with this place and made it my permanent home. Now in 1848, I met and married the love of my life, Mary Jane Thompson. She's buried here with me today. I was such a young man then and I wanted to do everything, and I tried to do everything. I founded Atlanta's first steam-powered factory and Atlanta's first street railway system, which was a distant precursor to your MARTA system. I even built Atlanta's first professional baseball field. We charged 25 cents admission and let the ladies in for free. Yes. <laughs> and I overcame my initial <coughs> objection to education because I realized how it could lift a person. So I donated the land that helped create the Georgia Institute of Technology. Oh, wow. Now, if it sounds as though I'm bragging on myself, well, perhaps I am. And mother would shame me for pride, but by golly, I am proud of the part I played in the development of this city. Now, I died in 1889. But today, if you go to the Fox Theater or you sip a 
cocktail in the Georgian Terrace Hotel, you are standing on ground that once belonged to me. Now, nature lover that I was, I named the surrounding streets in that neighborhood after trees. Cypress Street, Myrtle Street, Juniper Street. Perhaps you are familiar with that neighborhood. If you are, you may be familiar with another feature of it. One of Atlanta's most beautiful historic mansions, Ivy Hall. It's perched up on a little hill on Ponce de Leon Avenue as you travel out to the east from Peachtree Street. And it's a marvelous example of American Queen Anne design with endless wraparound porches. Now my son Edward built Ivy Hall in 1883 when Ponce de Leon Avenue was no more than a muddy path heading out to the east. Today Ivy Hall is owned by the Savannah College of Art and Design. Now, I realize I have gone on some little bit about myself, haven't I? <laughs> but please don't judge me as being vain. Ambitious? Oh, yes, absolutely. But interested in everything. It's like Albert Einstein said when describing himself, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious about everything. He could have been talking about me. <laughs> now, Champion and I are going to miss your company, but I rather suspect you're more than a little bit like me. You're curious. You are curious about what's up on that next corner, around that next bend, but you're going to like it, I promise you. But I thank you for dropping by tonight and indulging me in my favorite pastime, which happens to be talking about myself. <laughs> thank you. Good evening.